Okay, now it's time to tear into the block. We're gonna get this thing cleaned up and uh, ready for reassembly, uh, starting with some mineral spirits. Um, head gasket's still on. Let's see how many pieces this comes off in. Well, yeah, we'll clean this up. This is the Hyundai block that we got back in episode two of this series and tore down in episode three. My goal is to fully clean, prep, paint, and assemble the short block all in one day. So let's get to work. Next comes prepping for assembly. This includes using a solvent to clean and chase all the threads and to make sure all the bearing surfaces are clean and dry. Now the block is ready for assembly. So we're getting it all done right now. Uh, Alex is here. I'm here. And we're gonna put the block together. Here's everything we have that we think we need. Um, here's the block that we need. It's been cleaned. It was just cleaned. So we're gonna clean it and put it together all in one day. Which is cool. One day. One day, all right, let's get, to, day, let's get to work. Let's get to work. The plan for this build is not high horsepower, so we're sticking with the stock rods and pistons from a turbo 6-bolt engine. Don't worry, it's not going to be a boring 16G build. The vision of this car is to be the perfect Need for Speed Underground style street car. You'll just have to stay tuned to see what we do. The clearances came out perfect just on the tight side of the stock spec, which is what I expected from the condition of this block. Racing. Race.
hush puppies in their holes. These are the puppies. Smarter than the box. What you got there? Some some ring dingies. Pistoni, Tom Pistoni ring dingiers. Nice. So this From is the National Pubic Care of Republicans. Oh, good. That's those are rare. Yeah. So this is the NA Hyundai Block, and these are turbo pistons out of a ninety. Uh, turbo DSM. Um, everything checked out. Clearances were great. Um, so now we're going to put them in. Rings on, put them in. And then it can handle boost. All the boost. Oh. Whoa, whoa, after. Yeah. You're getting oil in the coolant passages. Fight me. <laughs> It'll be okay. It's going to blow up. Oh, yeah. This thing's going to blow up on the dyno. It'll be great. If you dab it, it doesn't tear. Yeah, yeah. Bring it up here so I can spill it. There, now it's not so. There we go. The book clearly says to like lubricate well. Yeah, he knew what I needed. Yeah, you just pointed, and I just knew. <laughs> <laughs> The Nirvana's never mind. <laughs> Would you rather be late or listen to that? I'd rather listen to that. I can't stand being late. And I don't think I know that song, so. so I don't know. Oh. I never listened to Nirvana. Mm -hmm. Number two, then. Number two, then. <laughs> All right, that's one. We're going to do number two. Does it still spin? There we go. Like a brand new goose. Nice. Stand her on up. That's a thing. What do you think? I think, I think. Looks yep. like a thing. Same thing. Yep. Now this old sad Florida Hyundai block is going to be a turbo. Sometimes you find good stuff. This is a brand new oil filter housing for a six bolt 
Gallant VR4. Or a 90 that has the external air to air oil cooler. So we're going to run that on this. Is there any schmoo on there? A little bit. All right. Now I'm going to get ready to put the head on. I've got a set of these. These are the um, head dowels, OEM parts from JNZ Tuning. So I'm going to put these in and then the head studs and then we'll put the gasket and head on. If you missed the head assembly, go back and check out episode three from this series to get caught up. All right, let's put this head on. Yes? Yep, he's real good. Okay. Hey! Here we go. What? Okay. Yeah. A little bit of a dance. You got some raspberry sauce on it? I do. It's a sla uh, so sauce. Slosberry sauce. Oh, and you're doing the meter. Slosberry. Yeah. Kegley. Yep. Kegley HLA. All right, there. The head is on. Sitting on. Now we'll just bolt it up and torque it up and it'll be on on. For real. Okay, so as some of you may know, when you use a 6-bolt and a 2G, you have to use the 2G motor mount because this is how this all lines up with the timing side engine mount in the, in the chassis. So um, you have to clearance this little spot right here for the 6-bolt water pump. Well, whoever did this swap, they clearanced it but it looks terrible. So I'm gonna clean this up before we uh, powder coat this and make it look real nice because that looks terrible. Just terrible. Now I'm gonna try and get these studs out because uh, I've got the billet mounts and uh, I wanna use bolts. With the timing mount all finished, we can move on to installing the timing components. All of the engine bolts are either new or ultrasonic cleaned OEM bolts, torqued to the proper specs. The tensioner and all the pulleys are OEM here too. We got a gritty balance shaft belt. There's the part number. Okay, I whipped out the gloves because I whipped out the gloves because we're putting some parts on. These are straight from Japan. They're the HKS timing gears. So we're gonna put those on with some ARP bolts. Very pretty. Oh, they don't fit. Just kidding. All right, now that those are on, we'll torque them down and then put the belt on. And would you believe it, for the belt, we also have an HKS timing belt. So this will look really nice. And they're, um, they're Kevlar, so they're reinforced. These are actually made by Gates. It says that on the belt. So I'm pretty sure the Gates belt is the same, just cheaper because it's blue instead of purple. So it doesn't have any red in it. Um, but I found a good deal for this on eBay. And 
I like the HKS look. We've also got an HKS clear upper timing cover. So that'll look really nice, all the HKS stuff. Until it doesn't, because these always get dark over time. And then I'll just put a non-transparent upper on it. So that's what we'll do. So yeah. Oh weird, it smells like, it smells weird. Let's put it on. So purple. All right, are you ready? You coming my way? Coming your way. Yep. Almost. Ready? Yep. Okay, there it was. Same deal. Yep. Ready? Okay, that's it. Could you run this one backwards? I know I said I didn't need your help, but I do. One more. Right there. There it is. Okay. It's not going to go anywhere. Yep. So that'll hold it. Very nice. It's timed and tension set. The pin moves freely in and out there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna let it sit for a while and chill, and then I'll I'll come back and run it around again and check it. But but yeah, so everything moves really, really smoothly and easily, but not too easy. Still good compression. But but yeah. She's timed. Before the timing cover goes on, the backing plates need powder coating. We're using a polished aluminum powder for these for that OEM plus look. Okay, so here is a 2G lower timing cover. And here's a six bolt 1G lower timing cover that I've trimmed to match the 2G one. Then I got a new 2G middle cover to put to put there. And that's how I'm gonna do the cover. Yep, so that'll go on. I'm gonna try and paint this black. And then that'll go over it. And then I'll have a nice full cover without a lot of trimming or a weird hole. Okay, here's what we've got. I've got this all cleaned up and painted and it, look, it, looks, it looks pretty good. So we'll go with this until there's a company called Rick's Racing that's making a um, six bolt in a 2G lower cover. Um, they've already made, they've already made this one. Um, so when they're done with that, if this bothers me, I'll just get that lower and probably their middle to match just so it's all the same. Cause you can see there's a finished difference, but yeah, so we'll see. And then here are the cover bolts. These are all OEM bolts, the right lengths, and everything to put this all on. So we'll put it all on. The cover's on. Um, I forgot to get this bolt. It's a long one. It's a uh, M6 by 45. So I might have one laying around and, and stuff, but yeah, I'll look around for that. Other than that, it's a very good fit. Everything fits very nicely. That's not perfect, but compared to some of the other six bolt in a 2G cover modifications, that is not bad. Um, this makes all the difference using the 2G middle cover. It does make a big difference because the um, the six bolt cover hole just goes all up there and it just looks terrible. So that's pretty good. We'll go with that. Next, we need to get the engine off the stand to gain access to install the rear main seal housing.
neat little trick is you can use the water pump pulley from a first gen to push this rear main seal in. It's the perfect, uh, the perfect size. It, yeah, it's a neat little trick. For the oil pan, we decided to use the Hyundai pan and weld on a 10 a.m. bung for the turbo oil return. What's that? <laughs> That's Alex's sexy dance. Don't call me Big Al for nothing. Okay, so now that the oil pan has the AN fitting welded on, um, it needs cleaned up. So we've got some old gasket material here, RTV. This is dented. It needs, I can't, what does it say? Pan gasket. Pan gasket, needs pan gasket. It's yeah. So, um, so yeah, we're gonna get this cleaned up, straightened up. It's a little little bent right here from whoever pried it off, but that's that's easy to fix and then we'll hammer that out. But yeah, so we're gonna get this cleaned up and painted. There we go, it's flat and straight. And that's a lot better than it was. You can see it actually has its shape now and it's not dented in so yeah there we go now let's paint it up so i've got this they call it an oil pan alignment kit um it's just studs in the corners and then bolts bolts for the rest so they're all stainless which is nice so i'm not gonna Try to pronounce that but these guys make good stuff put that on before the flywheel can go on the old pilot bearing from the block having an auto trans mounted to it needs to be removed using the old bread trick Next comes the new OEM starter plate and bolts, of course, followed by a freshly machined stock flywheel to finish up this stage. Thanks for watching, and make sure to subscribe so you don't miss anything.